Domaining range can help us describe what's allowed as inputs and outputs for our function. So domain specifically lists the possible input values, or you could think of that as the possible x values. So they're things that we are allowed to plug in. And then for the range, we're stating our possible outputs. So what are the possible y values that we can see for our function? So before we start making domain and range, let's just review our inequalities a little bit. Because what it will come down to is a set of numbers. And there are a few different ways we can display this set. Um, I'm going to show kind of the inequality form as well as our interval notation. So the interval notation is what I'll typically go with for our examples. So um, what we have here are a few different graphs of solution sets. And what we'll just do is interpret it and then use interval notation to summarize what we're seeing. So this first one is starting at 2, but not including 2. And then when it goes off to the right-hand side, that's going off to positive infinity. So how I could write this as an inequality would be that x is more than 2. Um, as in interval notation, we would start at 2, but not including 2. So we'd use parentheses and then going off to positive infinity. And with infinity, we always use parentheses. In this next case here, you can see they use a square bracket. And um, sometimes you see circles. So with a square bracket, you'd see a closed circle. With that last example, with number two, um, you would see an open circle to show that you want every value up to, but not quite including two. All right, so our next one, we can see it includes eight. So we want eight part of the set. And it goes off to the left-hand side, which is going to be the idea of negative infinity. So for this one, we can have anything for x that's less than or equal to 8. So with that we'll have from negative infinity up until 8, and then we'll use a square bracket to show that we include 8. Now in this next example, what this is showing is that our solution set is absolutely everything, except we don't want to include 4 in that set. That's the only thing we want to exclude. So Something you might see here is we could write this in words. We could say all real numbers to represent the entire number line. But then we want to say and, so we can have all real numbers and x cannot equal 4. So this wording right here represents the idea of absolutely everything and at the same time we can't have 4 as an answer. Um, what you might see, instead of writing all real numbers, is a symbol. Um, how I could have also written this is this symbol R that has these two lines to start. That symbol represents the real number set, so I would say all real numbers, and x can equal 4. Now in interval notation, what do I want to show is from negative infinity up until 4 but not including 4. And also I have this other side, so I also want to include starting at 4 but not including 4 and off to positive infinity. So I'm going to have these two sections. I'm going to go negative infinity up until 4 but not including 4. And then to include another section, I'm going to use a union symbol, which is just this big capital U. And then I'm going to have my next set, which starts at 4 but not including 4, and then goes off to positive infinity. With this next piece, we can see we have two intervals. We have negative 9 to 1, and we're including the, um, the endpoints. So I have negative 9 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. And then I have this next set, so I'm going to say or 8 to 12. 8 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 12. So I go write in that form. In interval notation, it'll be like what I wrote up above there. So I'm going to have square bracket, negative 9 to 1 in square bracket, and union, uh, square bracket, 8 to 12, and close the square bracket. 
All right, this next one is showing that x is between 2 and 5 and including those endpoints. So 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. In interval notation, I just have square bracket 2, comma, 5, square bracket. This next one, you can see we're only defined at certain locations, just negative 8, just 3, and just 9, and nowhere else. So we aren't going to use interval notation here because there isn't an interval. With all of these other cases, we had these intervals of solutions, but here it's just specific locations. So what we do in this case is we write a set of numbers. So for a set, we use these curly brackets, and I would just list the numbers. So I have negative eight, three, nine, and then I would close the set. So this is just a way of listing values, and with that, it's not an interval, it's just those specific locations. This next one, we have four to six. Uh, we're not including four, but we are including six. So that'd be the idea that four is less than x, but not equal to, and x is less than or equal to positive six. So for interval notation, we have parentheses four, comma six, in the square bracket. And our last one here, just to practice, we have from negative infinity up to 4, but not including 4. So we could have x is less than 4. Or we can have from 6 off to positive infinity, so we could say x is more than or equal to 6. So with this, we have two um, intervals that we want to include. We have negative infinity up until 4, but not including. And then union with including six, so a square bracket, and off to positive infinity. So, like I said, we're gonna focus on using interval notation, but sometimes before setting up interval notation, it can be nice to have a visual or working with the inequality first. And then the only time we won't really be using interval notation is when it's just going to be a set of numbers.